okay, so moving on from that one, we're going to quickly touch upon this. I thought this was pretty funny and a good way to sort of um, embrace the nipper baby discourse. has been a little bit exhausting to cover and to keep an eye on and whatnot. For the most part, because I feel like some of it has been conflated and construed and twisted to fit people's agendas. And mostly from the reaction of people that are, you know, bona fide nipper babies that they don't seem to understand why some people would have an issue with the fact that they've been handed everything in life and given a platform that some people have to fight tooth and nail from or tooth and nail for and sometimes even fighting tooth and nail for it it doesn't actually mean that you get it in the end and i feel like the the premise initially of the nipper baby discourse was more so along the lines of hey if you're coming up in the middle industry or the entertainment industry whatever whatever industry you're in where these kind of uh, you know um, advantages are somewhat beneficial it is quite handy to know that if you're struggling it doesn't necessarily mean that um, the people that uh, got ahead of you are somehow there because they've been struggling more. Sometimes those people got there because they have an advantage of having a particular door open, particular inter- act in, you know, introduction that affords them the ability to maybe skip a certain f- f- number of steps. So I feel like the Nipper Baby um, debate for me was more so, here's some solace, here's some comfort in knowing that the person that's in front of you that's also the same age has been afforded these privileges that's why they're there before you now it just means that you have to work harder to get the position that you're in but that might explain why people are where they are and also it might give you a more realistic idea of how far or how long it's going to take you to get to where you need to get to and also maybe it might help you to stop doing the whole like compare you know comparison thing um you know uh fomo thing whatever it may be feeling that you may have so that you can maybe kind of concentrate on the work and get yourself where you need to be but it wasn't i didn't feel like a criticism of nipper babies because it just is what it is right i think in all intents and purposes if all of us, I mean, all of us, myself included, you know, let's say working class, middle class people decided one day, okay, I'm going to try my best to achieve all my dreams in every what facet that I can, regardless of the industry. And we work really, really hard to slave away and to kind of establish ourselves. And then we end up having kids. You'd of course want to give those kids every advantage and opportunity that you got because you worked half an opportunity so that they don't have to work as hard as you, right? That's kind of what you want to do. You kind of want to lay um, a sort of good foundation so that your kids can kind of work off of that and kind of allow them the abilities and opportunities that you never potentially had, which is essentially what nepo baby nepotism is in a way. It's kind of that ability to sort of like, you know, um, allow people within your family to kind of gain advantage from things that you basically had worked hard for to establish an industry that is traditionally hard to kind of crack. And we know as well that those introductions can go a long way because we know how, you know, how far an introduction from somebody that you know can go a long way. So imagine on top of it having people that are well known in the industry. So it's kind of an easy thing to kind of wrap your head around. For some reason, I don't know why, but the Nepo babies themselves can't seem to accept that they've all seemed to have a very negative and um, combative reaction to it which maybe makes sense because i feel like if you're questioning a nipper baby or you're basically explaining how they got there in some way it's you it's you kind of questioning the validity of their career you're kind of calling to question why they're even there in the first place um their hard work their talent all this sort of things came into play which obviously is going to hurt their feelings because it doesn't matter if you get introduced or not you know into modeling you still have to walk those catwalks. You still have to maintain a certain weight. You still have to go to fitting. So you can get some head starts, but you still have to do the work. So I guess if you're a model in that industry, it can feel a little bit hard to take when people are saying that you don't deserve the position that you're in because you feel like you've worked hard. But obviously, if you're some girl from, you know, from the Balkan somewhere, or you're some girl that was, you know, sent over here from Africa to go and model, you're not going to have a good time hearing some girl saying woe is me when you legitimately had to support an entire family off your model check and everything was handed to you in a silver platter i get it i get it i get it but i feel like heli bieber's you know embrace of it was quite refreshing because clearly somebody that was i feel like a lot more self-aware than some of the other ones out there and she decided to put it on a t-shirt and this little crop top t-shirt that she wore out and about which is quite funny because clearly it was something that was arranged you would imagine um to get a paparazzi out there wearing some wash that jeans some good shoes and whatnot and a little t-shirt that says nipper baby out there on the front which is absolutely lovely then i had to of course go and google and find out what her nepotism is from and i never even knew did you know nipper flipping Hattie Bieber was half brazilian i had no idea i guess being half brazilian when you're white it's sort of like being half african when you're white it's like 
you know, it doesn't really matter. But still, I had no idea if she was half Brazilian. Her mum, this lady here called Kenya Baldwin, is Brazilian. And I had no idea that was the case. And obviously her father being Stephen Baldwin. So clearly that was something that you maybe would say is some form of nepotism in a way. I don't really think so because what is she? She's more of a model. She's more of a muse. Um, I'm not really sure if her mum gave her any sort of advantage to kind of get into the industry. From what I can see, she was, what, a Brazilian graphic designer, it seems like here. Um, uh, obviously very attractive in her own right. And then uh, Bolden, of course, is an actor. So I don't think that actually went any sort of way. Probably did it, probably could, who knows. But still, the fact that you're born into a family with you know good genetics and a pretty decent bank balance is going to afford you opportunities that maybe most people won't have able to have and maybe the connections as well being in LA and whatnot. But I did actually like the fact that she embraced it with this kind of, you know, T-shirt, this crop top T-shirt number here out and about and sort of, you know, wore it with some sort of level of pride because that's all you have to do. That's essentially what you have to do. There is no other way to respond to these allegations that isn't going to make you look like an absolute crazy person because it's not that deep it really isn't you are nepo baby so what you know like ideally we'd all like to be nepo babies we'd like all like the ability to have a have somebody introduce us and you know afford us the ability to jump some steps so we don't have to toil away you know in the flipping gulags trying to get ourselves recognized i know for myself this is a really bad example but i worked in a flipping bowling alley you know serving chicken nuggets and chips and stuff and i got that job only because my dad's my uncle basically um you know was able to give me a good recommendation and he was i think the janitor or something of the bowling alley right he gave me up you know basically told the manager hey if you need somebody uh please get my nephew in here and he can work and that was the first job i ever had and i'm so thankful for at the time because i legitimately was struggling even to get an interview with flipping jd sports they would never take us and that was not their fault as well because i was coming out of secondary school um i think at the time if i'm not mistaken and i had no experience all i had was like the two years experience you have going to do you know um what's that thing that you do two weeks experience going to do uh, work experience we'd have here in the uk where you'd go and you'd work in a particular sort of industry that you wanted to do in you know you wanted to kind of have a job in when you it's kind of hard to to surmise because it makes no sense because how do you know what you want to do as a job when you're 16 but still that is sort of program that you do <clears throat> and i end up working in an electronic shop somewhere in tottenham court road selling cameras it was awful horrible place to work in and the owners made it really awful and horrible and at the end he said hey we did this on purpose because we want you to know how difficult it will be for you as an adult once you if you leave college so make sure you don't come back here and it was a really valuable lesson a bit corny a little bit qvc ish but it kind of led me on a straight and narrow to the point where i went to university did all the good stuff from everything going forward but one thing i do remember is that that first job in that bowling alley where i was working behind the chicken you know the fried food counter on my own i take people's money run to the back make chips and hot dogs and chicken nuggets and stiff and shit and popcorn and whatnot that was legitimately one of the hardest jobs i had but also the best because it allowed me the opportunity to have money to you know take girls out to the cinema buy myself flipping trainers and whatnot and go out and eat or whatever a few times during the week and i wasn't getting paid anything I, you know after i remember one time after a month of working i just about had like 500 pounds which is absolutely horrible i remember nearly crying thinking what the amount of working you know the taxes took it out of me but still i only got that job because my uncle if it's not for my uncle working in that job as a flipping janitor right it wasn't even like he was the owner or the cto just as a friendly neighborhood janitor with the keys you know make sure everything was working cleaning up of some stuff here and there whatever it may be and he has able to give me the opportunity to get in that kind of place and i was so thankful for it you know that it's 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 it doesn't it's not it's crazy to assume somebody working in an industry such as the entertainment industry in hollywood where it's notoriously difficult to get into there is no straight route to get into this industry why it would be advantageous to have somebody known to tell you hey to give you an intro to kind of give you an arm around the shoulder to just turn about people open a couple of doors put some ct people in a couple of emails that stuff goes a long way and it's very very much welcomed i know i would welcome it if it was me i'd be all over it I'd be all over it like in a heartbeat, legitimately be all over it in a heartbeat. So I see nothing wrong in it personally. And people are completely overreacting. Um, I think if anything, especially the Nipper Babies featured in our article on Vulture, they're they're living in a eternal state of hell. Because a lot of them are very, you know, obscure Nepo babies, people who maybe are under the tutelage of, you know, very well known people. So you're having to kind of try to uh, match or 
you know um, beat the success of your 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 parents who you're never going to you know eclipse in any way shape or form you have the weight of your of their name on the on your back that you didn't ask for um you have the expectation of people around you that you didn't ask for either you want to live a regular regular life people are looking at you like you're wasting your platform like all these unnecessary pressures coming at you from left and right can make life pretty miserable for someone being a myth it's not all it's not all roses out there for sure it's not all roses especially if you've been if you've grown up to think that's normal you're not going to have the level of appreciation that maybe a regular smuggler people would have right um the hustle might not be the same either because you're not poor you don't you know you don't literally have to fight for every breadcrumb that's on your table and you're always got an allowance or something that's kind of coming in that kind of it makes stuff a bit more comfortable uh, i can only imagine how much hellish that can be and i'd much rather be on the brink of poverty than you know living in those laps of luxury and then trying to work hard it's just it must be such so hard even to switch that mindset over so it's not all champagne and toast mate i can definitely tell you that but yeah i like the teacher from heli bieber i thought she in, in, you know embraced it a little bit better than most people and clearly she's one of the ones that kind of gets it and isn't that offended when people call her out for being one because it's not really that deep in my opinion but hey what do i know what do i know